If you're looking to get into homebrewing, you're most likely not wanting to go straight into making a sour, barrel-aged, triple dry hopped, imperial, cereal, oatmeal, pastry, vanilla, bourbon stout. Because that's complicated, and you just want an easy recipe to wet your whistle with. I'm going to give you my top 5 easy recipes that I brewed up in my series of brewing Dungeons & Dragons beers. If you're just starting out, you probably don't want to have to worry about water chemistry, sparge temperature, step mashing and mash outs, multiple grains, multiple hops and all of that stuff. These recipes are great to take your first brewing step, as well as to help you slowly experiment with more complex ideas. Obviously I'm also going to leave links to the recipes and further brew videos of these beers in the description. And now enough waffle. Let's get right into this. Number one, the Baldur's Gate Pale Ale. Now this is a fantastic pale ale recipe with great maltiness, but also a really wonderful strawberry-like hop aroma. You practically can't get easier than this. This is a lot of peas in this. Potter, potter, potter. This recipe just requires 93% golden promise malt and 7% crystal. Although realistically, you can ditch the crystal if you're not sure about it just yet and just go full 100% golden promise. It's nice and easy. Go for around 5% ABV, so whatever volume of golden promise gets you there, depending on your batch size. Hops, just go for Callista. One hop and one malt. It's a nice, easy smash recipe to get started and lets you actually taste the differences between the different hops and the different malts. Callista gives off really wonderful strawberry-like notes and these marry really well with this malt. Use about 20 grams at 60 minutes into the boil and 15 grams at 10 minutes left off the boil. It's fairly simple. Obviously, this is for a five gallon batch. Use US05 yeast that comes dry, so you don't need to worry about starters or anything like that. And it's a decent yeast that stands up to temperature fluctuations, because I'm going to assume that you don't have a steady way to keep your temperature stable. Aim for about 20 degrees, and you should be done in a week or two, roughly. Mine took around a week for a five gallon batch. The result is a gorgeous beer that's beautiful, wonderful color, and something that you'll really love. And if you don't, well fair enough. And let me know why by leaving a comment or subscribing or something. Number two, the Black Bottom, the Piwa Grzyski. This was previously extinct and was brought back in 2010 by Polish homebrewers. You get to get a taste of history by brewing this exceedingly simple to make beer. Seriously, it's potentially a contentious beer style given that it uses smoked malt, but it's nothing like a Schlinkerla, I promise. It's more of a light smoke, a waft, if you will. 100% oak smoked wheat malt, and if you want oak smoked, and you definitely want wheat malt, the oak smoked gives it a really nice light taste. Almost like maybe somebody 10 houses down the road is having a light barbecue in their back garden. You can't really smell it properly, but you get a light hint of it occasionally. Keep it light as well. You want the beer to be about 3% EBV. Well, actually, speaking of barbecues, that's pretty perfect for it. Hop choice, if you can get it, go for Lublin hops. They're much more traditional. I couldn't, so I just use SARS. Again, one malt and one hop. There's a pattern developing here. It's a nice, easy recipe again. I went for about 35 grams of SARS at 60 minutes into the boil, and then another 35 grams at 10 minutes into the boil, and ferment this with some K97 German ale yeast, or again, the Piva Grzyski style yeast, if you can get it, and keep this at about 20 degrees for around a week. Mine took a lot less. The result is a light and smoky beer that you can keep knocking back consistently. Quality. Number three, the deep ale, or the German pseudo pills. And I'm calling it a pseudo pill so people don't get up on my ass about it not being a true pills. Obviously, I made this into a cocktail, but I'm talking about the base beer here. I know usually we're not all the best at forward planning, or at least I end up like this, and I end up drinking my medicine in April because it's nice and I want it now, and I can't wait until September. And that usually leads to it being the peak of the summer, much like it is now, where it's incredibly hot, there's a lack of proper temperature control, and you really want a nice cold one, and you want it now. I want it now! This recipe is an absolute treat using Kvike for a real quick less than a week turnaround. Again, 100% pills the malt, and around 30 IBUs of Halata Middlefru at 60, and another like 5 IBUs at 10 minutes left of the boil. Mash this at 65 degrees, and ferment at about 35 degrees for like 3 days using Lutra Kvike. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! 3 days in, and it's probably gonna be done. At which point, you can just chuck it into your keg, or bottles if you're sadistic, and enjoy a nice, crisp, cold one. Is it as good as a pilsner fermented in the caves of Germany at precisely 8.4 centigrade before conditioning for exactly 79 days, 3 hours, 42 minutes, 35 seconds, 42 microseconds? Well, no, but it's still going to be a nice pseudo lager. Number 4. 
Speaking of lagers, this recipe is a beaut. Never said beaut before actually. The spruce beer. Now fair enough, spruce might be tricky to find, but if you can get your hands on it, oh boy. And if you can't, Etsy I guess? Trust me, with this wonderful citrusy, sweet, almost candy-like aroma and flavor, this lager will blow up your mind. And it's so easy to make. 100% pills them all, done. 20 IBUs of Magnum hops at like uh, 60 minutes into the boil. Well, that's you done for hops. Maybe like 20 grams of spruce shoots at 60 minutes into the boil. And then another maybe 50 grams of spruce shoots at flame out. Again, this is pretty easy and you could even eyeball the spruce shoots really. Mash it at 65 degrees, fairly standard, and ferment at room temperature with Lalamon Diamond Lager yeast. Now, obviously, if you have a way of pressure fermenting, do pressure ferment because that makes room temperature lager fermentations even better. But I'm going to assume if you're watching a top five easy to make recipes, you probably don't have these available, in which case diamond lager yeast will do absolutely fine at room temperature. The result is this magnificent citrus aroma. It's sweet, it's slightly hopped, but a very crisp lager. Truly astounding, incredibly easy to make, and will even cure your scurvy. No clickbait. Number five, the Black Grog Ale the Belgian table beer. Now, talking about truly astounding beers, this might be a little bit more complicated than the single malt and the single hop that most of these have been. It's got a whole four different grains. Whoa. Ah! And no clickbait, this beer will absolutely rock your world. I've had people brewing this up and telling me how much they've enjoyed brewing this. And I am sure that you will too after you've brewed this up and left a comment. See what I did there. 62% pills the malt, 14% rye malt, 12% malted oats, and 12% wheat malt, and aim for like a 3.2% ABV. Mash it high at about 68 degrees Celsius, 154 Fahrenheit, with about 16 IBUs of Styrian Goldings at 60 minutes of the boil, and 8 IBUs of Styrian Goldings at 30 minutes left of the boil. Ferment this with 3711 French Saison yeast at like 20 Celsius-ish. Definitely let it free rise because it is a Saison yeast and it might stall at lower temperatures. And that's the beauty of this beer, is this Saison yeast. It's spicy from the rye, it's malty, it's got a nice weird Saison funk character to it, and it's got some really nice body from the really high mash, as well as the rye malt, the malted oats, and the wheat malt. So it does not feel like a light watered down 3.2% ABV beer. And to top it off, it's low in calories and it will not get you slaughtered. Ideal. If anything, I actually need to brew another batch of this because this was just chef's kiss. Now hopefully these give you some inspiration for brewing your own. And if you need any help, feel free to reach out here or on Discord or however weird other creepy way you manage to find me. I'm more than happy to help out. As always, please leave a like and subscribe and all of that. And you can even consider becoming a member and joining if you want access to any of these videos in advance when I actually end up making them in advance. Cheers. Thanks for watching.